if my notion was that there are a set of um, activities that are relevant to spiritual life, and it was my responsibility on campus to tend to those activities, uh, that would be a little bit easier to do. Um, but I, I think we're whole and integrated persons, um, and spiritual our spiritual life is uh, impacted by what happens in the classroom. It's impacted by what happens in the cafeteria, in the residence halls, on the on the playing field, in the uh, practice room, um, all of those things. And and not only that, but our spiritual life uh, is unfolds in the course of a story. So understanding the past, the history we bring with us to this place, and imagining and hoping about what's to come in the future. Uh, all of those things are part of the spiritual life. Richard Light, a guy down at Harvard, um, studies these kind of things, wrote a book, and this is probably 20 years ago, um, and found that the, the two things that impact students the most in terms of personal change and transformation, which is the goal of education, right? Becoming something more than you are. The two things that impact that the most are relationships and out-of-classroom experiences. What the Elijah Project and Quest trips try to do is integrate some of those other things. How can we facilitate relationships that are going to be about discovery of oneself, tr true self, and uh, inspire an inquisitive engagement with the world around us? And secondly, provide those kind of experiences that can teach about ourselves and about the world around us. The Elijah Project is a 12-month program. Students uh, apply to get in, uh, and it consists of uh, a seminar class in the spring term, Foundations of Work and Vocation, which is a pretty heady uh, class with a lot of uh, theological, philosophical concepts, kind of um, backing out of what should I do with my life to what does human life mean and what does responsible human action look like and what are ways that people have answered that in the past, what does scripture have to say about that, how have different Christian traditions understood those big questions. Um, so, so students come from that spring term, it's a small group, 12 to 14 students, and we meet twice a week for regular class discussion, a lot of reading, a lot of writing, a lot of class conversation. So they come uh, away from that class with some concepts and some categories and questions uh, that then they take with them in the next couple phases. From the spring, they go to a summer internship that uh, Laura and I set up for them. Laura, my wife, works uh, really hard to, to help craft kind of personalized experiences for students that draw together their diverse interests and questions, puts them out in the world where they can uh, experiment with those things in a laboratory of, of real uh, uh, people and situations and events. We take another class together that moves from the conceptual and the theoretical down to the concrete and the psychological and the historic and we ask, who am I as an individual who's God made me to be? Uh, what on earth is going on here? Uh, what are the trends that are shaping the globe? What's shaping society? What are the needs? What are the opportunities of this moment? And how do I match those two together? When the students come back in the fall, they move into residence together. They live together in Dexter House, which is a, a small house just, just off campus on the other side of the highway. Um, and they share life together, kind of under the understanding that they're, they're in relationship for the sake of helping each other become who it is God's calling them to be.